Hello everybody. So today's DIY decor video, um, I'm going to be showing you how to create a clothespin wreath. Now I like this project because it's pretty simple, uh, doesn't cost a lot to make, and um, you can customize it to any sort of situation or holiday, you know, or feel you have, you know, like, you know, a theme to your decor in your home. Um, really, the options are endless. But um, the one I'm going to show you today, I like fall and I like sunflowers. So my clothespin wreath is going to be colored to look um, like a sunflower. So before you gather all of your supplies, um, you do want to think about what color you want to use on your wreath. Um, because the first thing you're going to need to do is some spray painting. And so keep that in mind when you want to do this project. I recommend uh, painting your clothespins ahead of time and then uh, letting them dry, of course. And then you'll have time on a different day to assemble the actual wreath. Um, the colors that I chose to use today are this marigold color and Kona Brown. And then I have a little brighter yellow, a sun yellow, because I want to do two different um, shades of yellow to get that natural sunflower feel. Um, and you know, you want plain wooden clothespins. So here's an example of some, and they're not too expensive. You can usually get them even at um, the dollar store uh, or a home improvement store like Menards. Um, and you want, a good amount. I would say at least a hundred, depending on how tightly you want to clip the uh, pins onto your uh, wreath. But I think they come in packs of 50 or more, so just make sure you have enough. And then um, go from there. decided what colors you want to use um, on your clothespins for your wreath, you definitely are going to want to go outside to do this. But since it's raining today, I'm just going to show you um, a helpful tip that I found when wanting to spray paint the clothespins. You want to take your clothespins and clip them on the outside edge of a cardboard box. That way, you know, if I take this paint, as an example, and I'm not going to spray inside, but that way I can spray paint all the way around on this side and over here and then also get in between there so that I have full coverage of my clothespins. And because they're put to the box, they won't, you know, glue themselves together when painting. So. That's a really helpful tip. If you ever need to spray paint a clothespin a certain color, you can certainly use a brush, you know, and acrylic paint in a bottle if that's all you have handy. But I found spray paint so much faster, uh, a lot better coverage, and doing this little box trick is definitely going to help you out. So this is what the wire, um, wreath frame looks like and you can buy these at you know Dollar Tree um, or other uh, hobby shops like Hobby Lobby because they're often used to make floral wreaths with silk flowers and things like that but but it's a really fun way to make a clothespin wreath as well and normally they come in a dark green color I spray painted mine with the Kona brown color that I had um, the same time that I spray painted my clothespins because I decided I want <clears throat> the you know same color scheme throughout so definitely keep that in mind if you uh, get your wire frame and you decide you want to change the color paint at the same time that you um, paint your clothespins so that it can dry as well uh, before we start this project so for simplicity's sake I've already assembled most of my clothespins um, 
uh, to my wrist frame. And I just want to show you, I have the frame turned so that the curve goes up like this. Um, that's just a personal preference. I want the clothes pins to be tilted in so it kind of has that sunflower look like the petals. Um, you could certainly do it the other way. That's totally up to you. But I find that it's easier to hang the wreath if if it's curving in, so facing towards you. Um, and then of course, you want to kind of plan out your design. Like I'm doing an alternating pattern in the with the two different yellow colors that I have. Um, it all depends on the effect you want. If you're doing, you know, like maybe you're doing a 4th of July wreath and you've got red, white, and blue clothespins. So you may want to do a pattern that way. Or you may want it to look kind of like the flag. So all the blue are over here and then you do a red and white stripes around. Um, it's really totally up to you and don't be afraid to play around with it. Now, I chose to just go ahead and clip my pins on but you can if you're worried about it coming apart or you want a more permanent um, wreath you can use hot glue so you would put your hot glue right there between the two clips and uh, two pieces I mean and you'd have to work quickly because it dries very quickly so you would hot glue and then clip it onto your uh, frame if you want a permanent thing. I found that they stay on pretty good and tight, you know, so I don't worry too much about making sure they're clipped on. But for my pattern, I'm doing, it's a little difficult to see, but I'm doing the darker golden color clipped to the two outside rings of the wreath. And then the lighter color on the second and third. So skipping one and going underneath, underneath this wire here so that you can see that. Um, so I'm gonna finish placing all of my clothes pins on um, the outer edge. pins attached. I do want to point out that I did leave a space right here at the top um, and I chose to go with one of the little side pieces here um, and I left that space on purpose. I want to hang a ribbon there um, that I can use to hang up the wreath when it's finished. So think about that when you put your clothes pins on. You may want to leave a space um, for hanging. And so the next step now is I'm going to use my dark brown clothes pins and I only have a dozen of them because I'm going to put them on the inside here of, to go in the opposite direction. And I just want a few to scatter around. I don't want to fill the whole thing. It would make it quite heavy. Um, but that'll give it the look of the center of the sunflower. there you go. Got the center of my sunflower wreath and the only thing left to do is to tie a ribbon at the top but it's pretty neat and like I said you can customize this wreath in any way you'd like, any colors you'd like. Um, it'd be really fun to do like a watermelon one with green and pinks um, but it's a fun simple project and I hope you all have the chance to uh, make your own and it doesn't take a lot of time the dry time is probably the longest time for the painting part but let me know if you have any questions give us a holler at the library otherwise i hope you enjoyed this little diy project and we'll see you next time